Hello, Becky. Hello, Brad. Hello, hello. 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 It's that time of year again. It's South by Southwest. How many times, Brad, have we done this now? Is this our third, fourth? This will be this will be our third, yeah. Very third. exciting. My very, second. Very exciting. Yes. Your second. Yeah. You did you have a good experience with it last year, Becky, the stuff that you saw? Yeah, I did. I loved it. I mm. loved it. I can't remember what any of them were now, but no. Um... Well, I seem uh, to remember having a nice time at the time. There was stuff that then we sort of had to keep covering on Fresh Blood throughout the oh, year, God, right? Yeah. Stuff like well, Sissy and... Sissy, Deadstream. Deadstream, um, yes. That was the big one, wasn't it? That but was the big one. How I, I Baffer Met Your Mother, that one. Oh, fuck. The Cellar? Yeah, The Cellar. Yeah. So at this point, this is like we're at the beginning of the festival. We're going to cover as much as we can virtually as with previous years. Um, so we thought we'd just have a little run through the program, right? See what's coming up, some of the horror stuff specifically and sort of horror adjacent stuff. So I'll start by talking about maybe one of the big, the big movies in the horror world that is getting its premiere at South by Southwest. And it is coming out fairly soon, I think next month. So people will be able to see this very soon. But this is Evil Dead Rise, mm. the new Evil Dead movie, uh, which I think we're all very excited about, right? This is mm-hmm. uh, obviously it's a it's another Evil Dead film. It's directed by Lee Cronin who I've had on the podcast before. He directed a film called The Hole in the Ground in 2019, which was a really cool, creepy little Irish sort of folk horror type movie. Um, and he's he's taken on this new Evil Dead film, a twisted tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons, thrusting them into a battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. <laughs> That sounds good. It it follows that kind of um, spiritual sequel where they put it in an apartment block, mm. which is obviously very important. You know, like uh, Demons Two, where <laughs> <laughs> like all all the heavy hitter zombie movies or possession movies or demon movies mm-hmm. always eventually have to end up in a tower block or an apartment block. And thankfully, Evil Dead Rise is 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 taking up the mantle. I have seen the trailer. I've watched the trailer numerous times and it looks gnarly as fuck. And I can't wait to see what chaos awaits us. Uh, because this is, like you said, this is the first movie. This is what, technically the fifth Evil Dead movie, right? And it's the first one that is not set in a cabin in the woods, right? It's sort of taken the, the action to the city. Um as is the pattern right now. We've got Scream 6 and all those kind of things. But um, originally, I read that the film was supposed to go to streaming only. It was going to go to HBO Max and places like that. And test screenings for it went so well. And people loved it so much that the studio decided to give it a theatrical release, which is exciting, right? Becky, are you are you like an Evil Dead fan, generally? I love it. I love the Evil Dead. Um, I don't like the I don't like the remake that loads of people love, but I'm hyped for this. Yeah, look at him. Um, <laughs> ten years old. It's 2013. That one. It's so geez. ten years since we last got a, an Evil Dead film. Uh, I didn't. Re- I didn't love that one either. That was the Fede no, Alvarez no. one. But I haven't seen it since, and I thought I well, should give it another go. I've only seen it once, to be fair. So I, it probably is worth another shot after 10 years. But um, I've gone against type and I have watched the Evil Dead Rise trailer and agree with Brad, it looks gnarly as fuck and it looks really good and I'm really fucking excited for this film. Really excited. So uh, yes, I am going to definitely be seeing that one. So I will report back uh, at the end of the festival. Um, all right, let's move on to some other films that are premiering at South By. So we've got a film in the narrative feature category that I've heard good things about called Raging Grace. Becky, tell Tell us about Raging Grace. So Raging Grace is going to be the first ever um, British Filipino feature film, which is quite exciting. A bold coming of rage story where Joy, a Filipino immigrant and her daughter Grace encounter a darkness that threatens all they have worked for. Um, And it's directed by a guy called Paris, excuse my pronunciation, but Barcilla or Barcilla. Um, it's going to get its world premiere at South by Southwest. And I don't know a huge amount about it apart from the synopsis, but a coming of rage story sounds pretty good. Um, it sounds really interesting, doesn't it? So that's Raging yeah. Grace, uh, which is playing in the narrative features section. We're going to come back to a couple of other narrative feature uh, movies later on. But first of all, let's get through the Midnighter category, because this is really our category, right? This is, Brad, this is kind of where all the sort of cult genre horror films belong, isn't it? This is the bread and butter, isn't it? This is what yeah. this is what this is what we come to South by Southwest for. 
as you said last year we saw some incredibly strong stuff the stuff the week the year before amazingly strong stuff and this selection of like is it eight films eight to ten films yeah um high hopes are high let's say hopes are high i've seen i've seen one of them already and that is one of my favorite films this year so oh this is very exciting all right so let's go through some of these films let's start with aberrance uh, Brad, tell us about Aberrants. Um, when city dwellers Ekme and Solange arrive at an old cabin deep in the Mongolian wilds, uh, there's a sense of foreboding that settles over the couple. So what we're looking at here is another Cabin in the Woods movie, but this one is Mongolian, Ooh. which is... I, I can't think of any Mongolian horror films off the top of my head. I'm sure there'll be people in the comments <laughs> that'll be straight on me. Have we not mentioned that? Uh, but this is uh, another world premiere, uh, North American premiere, uh, from a director called Batar Batsuksh. And uh, it's described as a crime drama, horror, mystery thriller. So that's a bingo, I think. That's, that's, that's a lot. That's, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> a lot. <laughs> that's the four lines done. I love it. I'm excited for that one. That sounds good. So that's Aberrance. Uh, that's playing in the Midnighters category. Another film called Brooklyn 45 that we've got here. So this is directed by Ted... Giojahan, I, th- I think that's how, is it, how do I pronounce his surname? All of these names have been very know, difficult we're th- to pronounce we're, so far. We're three for three on terrible pronunciations. Absolutely, here. this is why I gave myself Lee Cronin at the beginning. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is directed by Ted Giojahan, who had directed "We Are Still Here," right? Absolute banger. One of our faves, the kind of uh, amazing Fulci throwback with Barbara um, Crampton from a few years mm-hmm. ago. So his new film, uh, Brooklyn Forty Five. Five military veterans gather in the ornate parlour of a Brooklyn brownstone. Best friends since childhood, they've reunited to support their troubled host. But when his invitation for cocktails turns into an impromptu seance, the metaphoric ghosts of their past become all too literal. Trapped in the host's lounge, the the greatest generation now find themselves put to one final test with their only route to freedom being more bloodshed. Nice. Uh, this is ticking my boxes. We've got potential awkward dinner party here, set in a brownstone <laughs> house. We've got a seance. We've got ghosts and metaphoric ghosts. Loving. I'm loving the sound of this. this That's Mike good. Bingo. That's Mike Bingo. It's all in here. I'm I'm very much up for this. Brad, are you looking forward to this one? Big time. I mean, as you rightly said, We Are Still Here is an absolute banger. Yeah, it's so good. He also did Mohawk as well uh, a couple of years later, which I quite enjoyed as well. Yes. Um, so he's he's a, a very safe pair of hands, a very accomplished director that's very good at staging. Uh, that one, um, hopefully we'll get to watch during the festival, but also it is being distributed by Shudder. So hopefully that means at some point we'll all get to see that. Nice. Um, so that's Brooklyn 45. Okay, what's next? Next on our list, we've got a film called Furies, Becky. Tell us about this one. I am so excited uh, about Furies. Um, so it's directed by Veronica No. I'm going for. A mysterious woman trains a trio of girls to take revenge on a criminal gang that abuses females. The three lady warriors risk everything to challenge this corrupt empire before finally learning that their cause is not what they believed it to be. It's Vietnamese it's young women kicking ass i've seen the trailer it looks fucking brilliant it's a it's actually a sequel to fury singular um i uh, i couldn't be more excited about this one i'm well up for it and it's coming to netflix as well on i think the 23rd of march so people won't need to wait long for it amazing um all right let's move on to the next film on the list which is it lives inside bradley tell us about this good title mm Sam, an Indian-American teen, lives in an idyllic suburb with her conservative mother and her assimilated father. Sam's cultural insecurities grow due to her estranged friend, Tamira, who mysteriously carries around an empty mason jar all the time. In a moment of anger, Sam breaks Tamira's jar and unleashes an ancient Indian uh, demonic force that kidnaps Tamira. Sylvia plaffs the bell jar gone wrong. Very, very wrong. Okay, all right. Uh, This is directed by Bishal Dutta. Didn't fuck that up. That's good. That was good Thank work. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Uh, this is a world premiere, um, and it's looking like spooky demons in jars. I'm all about spooky demons yeah. in jars. Can't beat yeah. one of those. You don't get enough demons in jars these days. <laughs> no. you know? I've got loads of empty jars, and none of them have got demons in. <laughs> that you know of. Well, 
All right, well, that's that then. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's, uh, um, that sounds good. That's uh, It Lives Inside. Uh, next up, Late Night with the Devil. This looks fun. Uh, this is directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns, um, who had directed Scare Campaign in 2016 and a few other things. Uh, October 31st, 1977. Jack Delroy's syndicated talk show, Night Owls, has been a trusted companion to insomniacs around the country. But a year on from the tragic death of Jack's wife, ratings have plummeted. Desperate to turn his fortunes around, Jack plans a Halloween special like no other, unaware he is about to unleash evil into the living rooms of America. Late Night with the Devil is the recently discovered recording of what went on air that fateful night. Oh, this is like Mike Bingo, this one as well for me, because this is like, this sounds like Ghost Watch, basically. Uh-huh. Yeah, is big time. Ghost Watch, found footage. I want I want it to look like 70s television. Yeah. Uh, I want it to have all the trappings of cheesy talk show television, but then with genuine scares and fucked up stuff happening. You yes, know? please. Um, this sounds good, right? Very much. It sounds about. great. Well up for this. I'm all in on that one. Yeah, that one sounds brilliant. We're all in on that one. So that's Late Night with the Devil. That's also in the mid- Midnighter category. Next up, Talk to Me. Brad, talk to me about Talk to Me. Talk to me. Terry Tibbs. Um, I've been fortunate enough to see this one already. Um, mm. So when a group of friends discover how to conjure spirits using an embalmed hand, they become hooked on the new thrill until one of them goes too far and unleashes a terrifying supernatural force. Jesus Christ, this movie fucking owns. It's yes! so good. Good. It's so Amazing. good. It's directed by a brother du- duo of Michael Philippou and Danny Philippou. And think of it like Flatliners mm-hmm. in the Conjuring universe. Ooh. So, oh my God. Put that on the poster. Maybe they will, please. Brad Hansen, Evolution of Horror. There we go. Uh... <laughs> That'll be the second one, and this one will be positive. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, yeah, this film is is really good fun. It's really what it's a, a very unique world building uh, sort of exercise because it, it could be quite easy to kind of poo poo this idea, right? Because it's quite silly. You, you like they kind of do this like chanty seancey thing and and shake hands with this embalmed hand, <laughs> and it's kind of like a monkey's paw. Be careful what you wish for, but it's like it's other door. But they kind of use it as like a drug, right? Because they kind of their their spirit gets taken over by whoever they're talking to on the other side until they let but they have to like time it because if you do it go too long like they can take over it's just got the like layers of like fun concepts within it and it's genuinely fucking terrifying at times which oh, is oh that's yes. music to my ears that's what you need. Yeah. yes yeah that's what you need yeah re- really really recommend this one it's great incredible that sounds incredible. A lot of these actually sound like they might actually be frightening as well, which mm. I'm very much into. Um, love that. So that movie is Talk To Me. That is one that Brad has already seen and heartily recommends. So there you go. Uh, next up in the Midnighter category, Monolith. Becky, tell us about Monolith. Monolith is also Australian. And as anybody who knows me knows, love an Aussie horror. So mm-hmm. this is very exciting. Also, hilariously... The synopsis is a disgraced journalist turns to podcasting to try <laughs> to rebuild her career. Um, but her rush to generate headlines soon uncovers a strange artifact, an alien conspiracy, and what lies at the heart of her own story. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know a lot about it, but alien conspiracies is interesting. That's something a little bit different. Any X Files fans out there should be pricking up their ears. Um, yes. Yeah, strange artifacts. I assume that is said monolith. So, Aussie horror, alien conspiracies, podcasting, into it, podcasting. Yeah. Come yes, on, please. amazing, love that. That sounds great. Um, and then finally, in the Midnighter category, Becky, I've also given this one to you because <laughs> why wouldn't I? It's called The Wrath of Becky. Tell us about this one. I'm so excited. I fucking loved Becky, and not only because it's called Becky, I actually really like Becky. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> and this is the sequel and I really like oh, it. it yeah I this is my point. I didn't I know it was actually the sequel okay. I really right. liked Becky right, and this right. is the sequel to Becky The right. Wrath of Becky right. after that. living off the grid for two years <laughs> Becky finds herself going toe to toe against Daryl the leader of a fascist organisation on the eve of an attack and I'm pretty sure that Daryl is played by Sean William Scott oh, oh. amazing 
get yeah, to it. So I'm hugely, hugely excited. And not only because it means that I get to say Becky a lot. <laughs> Are there a lot of people out there in the world that have felt the wrath of Becky? <laughs> Mate, you have no idea. And you will know me by the trail of dead. <laughs> There we go. So that's the Wrath of Becky. Uh, that is the last one to talk about in the Midnighter category. And we're going to finish with just a couple of other recommendations from Brad. Because Brad, have you have you seen these two that we're about to discuss? Or I have, yeah. You have, lovely. So tell us about Appendage. Appendage. So Hannah is a young fashion designer who seems uh, fine on the surface, but secretly struggles with debilitating self-doubt. That is until she starts to grow an appendage which manifests oh all her fears so think of this i can't talk about it too much because i am technically embargoed on this so i don't want to give away too much but think of this as very much a spiritual basket case <gasps> in its in its concept not necessarily in its execution so obviously ba basket case is very scuzzy and you know new york <laughs> grime this is a lot cleaner but this is looking at mental health and how you have conversations with yourself and how you recompense with yourself and sometimes that can manifest in quite negative ways such as a belial-esque oh. growth on yourself just oh my god perhaps that's, that's oh my god yeah. So these all sound so much fun. They sound they? so good. So that's appendage. That's in the narrative feature category. Um, and then last but not least, let's quickly talk about Blackberry, Brad. Uh, Brad. Black, black, black. Blackberry, Brad. That was hard. Blackberry, Brad. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, so this is not horror at all, but I just want to give a special shout out of it because I saw it in Berlin and I fucking loved it. Mm -hmm. um, it is the story of the Blackberry handheld telephone device. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I heard a lot of buzz about this at Berlin. Yes. It's great stuff. So it's directed mm. by Matt Johnson, who did a film called The Dirties. I don't know if you remember that school shooter comedy from 2013. Mm. Really good fun if you haven't seen that. Highly recommend that as well. But he's done a new film with Jay Baruchel, uh, Glenn Howerton from His Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh, Carrie Yules, although I got told off because it's apparently Carrie Elwes. Elwes. Elwes, yeah. He's Carrie Yules to me. Um, and it, as I say... It's spelled Elwes. <laughs> of all the names to struggle with from today's <laughs> yeah. show... Yeah, but it doesn't sound cool. Elwes. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm El right, Anyway, we're not getting into that. <laughs> That's stupid. Um, but yeah, I. Um, it's weird because the rise and fall of Blackberry is, was so sharp and so quick that you kind of miss all the nuances of like what actually happened under our nose. I mean, we were all in our mid-teens, late teens when this was all going down. And I had no idea of like the insane shit that they got up to. Um, and I'm sure some of it's highly stylized. Think of it sort of like Wolf of Wall Street-esque in the way that it's presented. Um, but Glenn Howerton, special shout out to him, is an incendiary form in Blackberry. It's wow. such a great, fun performance. And uh, it's just a great two-hour, like, up-and-down roller coaster of corporate mayhem, basically. I can't recommend it highly enough. It's good fun. Awesome. Mm, yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff about that. That's amazing. So there you go. So that's Blackberry. That is in the narrative feature. And that's it for now. That's all we're going to preview. Hopefully, if there's time, we might see more. I mean, Brad, I'm sure you'll see as much as you possibly can over the next 10 days or so, right? I'm worried for my sanity. <laughs> we're yes. all worried for your health yeah. and well-being, Brad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll report back, hopefully, with our thoughts and reviews on some of the best films that we saw out of this lineup uh, at the yeah. end of the festival. And I'm sure we'll be tweeting and posting and letterboxing and all that kind of thing as well as we go. Um, so there you go. Thank you guys for for joining me to do this. Um, tell us where they can find you out there in the internet world. Becky? Uh, I'm at Bunny Dart on Instagram and Twitter and Patreon.com forward slash Bunny Dark if you want to throw me a few quid, please do throw a few quid go on you know you want <laughs> go to on, go on, um go and brad uh you can find me on all social media so instagram twitter letterbox wordpress all that sort of shit <laughs> um, i'm not joking i've just set one up actually yeah so amazing. Okay. i'm amazing. gonna try and write can you imagine <gasps> uh, but you can find me at all of those at had branson amazing guys thank you very much thank you Bye. Looking for more horror content? Subscribe now for more videos like this one and listen to the Evolution of Horror podcast. Head on over to evolutionofhorror.com. <laughs>